Now it's time for Lefties Losing It. And let's start with MSNBC, the ever-reliable HQ for crazy conspiracy theories. Remember the whole Russian collusion hoax? And they also love to push unhinged hyperbole, like this next clip courtesy of veteran Nicole Wallace, who makes a series of false claims about January 6th and then ends with this journalistic revelation. Republicans have been on their back foot when it comes to January 6th with an intentional refusal to accept the facts that led to the violent insurrection on the nation's capital. See this latest attempt by Louisiana Republican Clay Higgins in which he accuses the FBI of entrapping rioters in the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. The fact is that January 6th was a deadly insurrection in which Trump supporters beat cops with flagpoles. Full stop. That's it. You don't need to tell the whole story of January 6th. I don't know who this guy is. I've never heard of him. I've never seen him on social media. He, he's telling lunatic stories. Actually, the facts are that it wasn't an insurrection and the only person killed, killed that day, was an unarmed Trump supporter, Ashley Babbitt, who was shot dead by a police officer, Michael Byrd. And let's just listen again to that final point Wallace made about January 6th, a topic MSNBC is obsessed with. That's it. You don't need to tell the whole story of January 6th. I don't know. Yes, you just told Americans they don't need to know the whole story. That's the level of intellectual rigour among MSNBC news anchors these days. Now let's go to Michigan where migrants who have opted to move to America are now chanting death to America. Gaza has shown the entire world why these protests are so anti-America because it's the United States government that provides the funds for all of the atrocities that we just heard about. And this is why Imam Khomeini, who declared the International Day of Quds, this is why he would say to pour all of, your cha all of your chants and all of your shouts upon the head of America. Yes, they are chanting death to America. Now, my family had to flee the mad Islamists of Iran. And if you stand with those Islamists, then what the hell are you doing in America? Kindly pack your bags and head back to Tehran or any other Islamist hellhole that shares your worldview. Now, let's go to the UK where the young ones are taking their protests directly to the homes of politicians, including Labour leader Keir Steimer. I'm Ella, I'm 21, and I'm here today. I've just put up this banner outside of Keir Starmer's house saying, Starmer, stop the killing. Starmer's the leader of the Labour Party. He's got enormous power, enormous influence, and he can call on a two-way arms embargo on Israel to stop sending UK-made weapons over that are being used to cause genocide. But given the efforts they've gone to to intimidate a politician at his private residence where he lives with his children, these lefties losing it decided to double up their protests and also make a statement about catastrophic global warming that's going to kill us all. He's at a position where he's got an enormous opportunity to make a real difference and to do, to do something and to stop mass death that we know is coming from the climate crisis. Staying in the UK, let's look at this classic series of Vox Pops at a pro-asylum seeker rally. But those protesting do not want to personally help any refugees. Seems a bit mean. To actually uh, adopt a refugee and take them into your home? Well, if I had any space, I if would. If you had but any yeah, space. It would, wouldn't be right. a nice place to, to bring them because yeah. it's a bit overcrowded. Right. But yes, if I had the space, definitely. Thank you very much yeah. for that, love. Pop one into your home. Yeah, I live in a rental place, so I can't. Rental? Yeah, yeah. You can't do it. Yeah, yeah. Someone else's job. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm sorry, I can't. You can't, can't take I one. Can't. I don't have, I don't have, I don't, don't have, I don't have a space. Don't have the space. I, I, you have a refugee stay at your house? Yeah, I don't mind. You go on the list? I don't mind, yeah, I can't take give me the thing. Oh, wait, I can't, because my house is only a little small. And Amazing. Then... Now, would you be willing to have a refugee in your home? Uh, yes, if I had room. If you had room, it's funny, that. Look, I, I think if we ask more of these virtue signalers, one of them will step up and actually be willing to walk the talk. Uh, or just pretend to. To adopt a refugee? No, thank you. No, thank you. Any reason in no. particular? I don't. What sort of refugee are you talking about? <laughs> Do you be willing to adopt a refugee into your home? Uh, no. No. So, sorry, I can't. Would you adopt a refugee into your home? Uh, no, thank you. No? no. Adopt a refugee? Uh, 
Um, I would be willing, yeah, if I had the space. If yeah. you had the space? Yeah. So, where should we put them then? Where should we put them? Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, there's plenty of people who, who have got them. No one has any room. It's someone else's job. Thank God there isn't a housing crisis anywhere. Let's end with this brilliant bit of comedy courtesy of Ricky Gervais. This is Afterlife. I'm not sure if this is art imitating life or life imitating art. Right. Once and for all, I identify as an eight-year-old girl called Denise. Therefore, I am an eight-year-old girl. I'll tell that to your <laughs> you silly I identify as an eight-year-old girl. No, you're not an eight-year-old girl. You are what you identify as. Paul's this sort of shit all the time. He saw a documentary once about ME, had that for a year. That was a nightmare. You're tired all the time, I couldn't work. It was bull There is a lot of misunderstanding and cynicism about the disease. Yeah, and you didn't know it, you moron. Silly thought he caught last year. I was seven. Oh, me. You're a 50-year-old plumber from Sheffield. Your name's Dennis, for sake. It's Denise. I'm not calling you Denise. Again, transphobic, you see. If you love me, you deal with it. No, I do love you. But I married Dennis Cholton, and if that's no longer your name, then I'm not married to you.